I am Brother Stephen Elabo, welcoming you to the Life Bible Church, Charlottesville, United States, a place where the undiluted Word of God is being preached. You are about to listen to our general superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoye, as a comfort to share the mind of God with you and your family. I want you to be ready to pick up your pen and your paper and jot down important messages as they will do you good. God bless you and remain blessed. You can sit down. We are reading from Numbers chapter 10 and verse 29. Numbers chapter 10, verse 29. And Moses said unto Obab, the son of Raguel, the Midianite Moses' father in law, We are journeying unto the place of the which the Lord said, I will give it you. He'll give you something this year. Come thou with us. And we will do the good for the Lord concerning Israel. I come to tell you today, the Lord has spoken something good about you. And that good thing he has spoken concerning you will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. We are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. We are on a journey. And as we're on this journey, we need strength, and we need focus, and we need to have direction and control so that that place the Lord had already ordained that you will get to this year, you will not miss it. I will not miss mine. We are on a journey. And that's why we're talking about renewed strength for the heavenward journey. Renewed strength for the heaven watch journey. Our journey is to the promised land. Our journey is to heaven. It is heavenward. We need strength. We need focus. We need understanding. We need the partnership of God. We need the promise of God. We need the power of God. And we need this directing spirit every time saying, this is the way. Don't go that way. This is the way. Don't turn that way. This is the way. And as we listen to him, I will follow him or reach where he's taking us to in Jesus' name. Renewed strength for the heavenward journey. There are three points we're looking at before we pray. Recovering strength by feeding on the heavenly manner. Recovering strength by feeding on the heavenly manner. Number two, releasing saints to follow the heavenly master. He knows the way. It's been there before. He knows where your blessing is. He knows where the fulfillment of your life will come. He knows where the realization of the dream of your life will be. And as he leads you as the master, the heavenly master, then you are released to follow this heavenly master to that ordained place. Number three, renewing the spirit to fulfill the heavenly mandate. Renewing the spirit to fulfill the heavenly mandate. Everyone God creates in this world, God creates and God sends him to the world for a particular purpose. And now, if immediately you are born again, that purpose is even re-established. And as a child of God, you ought to understand you are not just there, and you are not an accident, and you are not just there by chance. You are here because the Lord himself has appointed, has ordained that you will be there. And you are born into the kingdom, and you are in the kingdom for such a time as this. Now there is a heavenly mandate. I cannot do what God has appointed you to do. You cannot do what God has appointed me to do. No matter how high you go, and no matter how great you walk, I should not be jealous of you because as high as you go, that's the ordination of God for you. That's a mandate of God for you. And I may go far. You're not jealous of me. Why? Because that's what God has ordained for me to do. You will not disturb me. And by the grace of God, I will not disturb you. And as I see the Spirit of God in your life, and the glory of God in your life, 
because I see that already on you. Somebody that says, see that glory of God upon you. Then you are moving up and moving up. I'll be encouraging you and say, keep on climbing, keep on climbing. You are not there yet until you are there because you'll be there in Jesus' name. Let's help each other. Let's encourage one another. And let's encourage that other brother, no matter how high they are going, you know that that is the only mandate for them. And you're renewing their spirit. You're encouraging them, enlightening them, so that you will reach that place the Lord has ordained for them. There are three things. Number one now, recovering strength by feeding on the heavenly manner. Let, let's come to First Kings chapter 19. In 1 Kings chapter 19, we're reading from verse 5. God had a purpose for Elijah, just like he has for you. God had a destiny for Elijah, just like he had for you. But there were some surrounding circumstances and situations that made him to become discouraged. And because of that discouragement, he was going the wrong direction. Then he was lying down. All strength gone. And all the vision he had before, everything gone. And all the passion he had in his heart. And all the kind of consecration. I will climb that mountain. I will get there. I'll destroy those false prophets. I'll destroy false worship. When he heard about the threats of Jezebel, then he went away and just lay somewhere. Look at chapter 19, first case, verse 5. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, there came. Then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. When no human being could come for encouragement, and could come for nourishment, and could come for raising him up and encouraging him to be what he ought to be. An angel came from heaven. You will not lack encouragement this year. Even if God has to send an angel to you, invisible, you might not see, but that invisible hand will direct you this year. And he said, arise and eat. He needed to recover strength by feeding on this heavenly manner. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. That was not enough. And now, because he's not got enough strength, the Lord will not stop feeding you this year, nourishing you this year, and giving you everything you need until you come to that premium, maximum level, and God will say, now you've got it, you can go. Somebody there. Now you've got it, now you can go. I'm telling you, you will run this year, you will not be weary. You will walk, you will not be tired. And then all the discouragement of the past, this year, I see the glory. I see the strength. And I see the power. And I see that we are climbing up this year in Jesus' name. Verse 7, the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat. Because the journey, you see that life is a journey. You see that ministry is a journey. You see that and when you endeavor to do something, it's like you're going on a journey and you need milestones and you need the strength to carry you through. And it is not where you were last month that you will be today. It's not where you were last year that you will be today because it's a journey. And it says, because the journey is too great for me. And he arose, and he did eat, and he did drink, and wait in the strength of that meat. He went in the strength of the angel's food. He went in the strength of that heavenly manna, 40 days and 40 nights, unto Ori, the mouth of God. He got there, I am getting there. I said, I am getting there. And look at this in Psalm 78. Psalm 78. And we're reading from verse 23. Psalm 78. We're reading from verse 23. Though 
he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven. He's talking about the children of Israel. They should they want a journey. They were going from Egypt to the promised land. And that's why Moses told Obab, the son of Pregol, he said, Come along with us because we are journeying unto the place where the Lord has said, I will give unto you. And for them to get there, they needed this heavenly manner. And for you to get to the place he's sending you to, you need this heavenly manner in verse 24. And he read and had arranged the manner upon them to eat and had given them the corn of heaven. You see that? He had given them the corn of heaven. What does that mean? Look at verse 25. Man did eat angels' food. Heavenly manner. Heavenly manner. And it's not exhausted yet. It's still there. And it will give you strength this year. The word you take it for man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God shall man live. Man did each angel's food, and he sent them meat to the full. It will fill you up. But you must take time to take that food. You must take time to receive that heavenly manner. In Mark chapter 6, Mark chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 30. Mark chapter 6, reading from verse 30. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him of all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure, no time to so much as to eat. You see, the people that need help, they're always coming for help. Help me. Pray for me. Counsel me, teach me, feed me, sing to me, do this and do that. They do not realize that those ministers, those singers, and those people that are ministering to their needs, they do not understand, they also need some time to feed on the word of God. They say, you know, the GS, you know, just uh, finished uh, all that retreat. What wasn't that a wonderful retreat? And God had given him the strength. And then after that, we went to the uh, Congress. And then morning, afternoon, evening, three times a day, and preached the word. Isn't that wonderful? Pastor Ryan, we're praying for you. And then we finished on Saturday and the following day, Sunday. Here we are for the combined service. And then Monday Bible study. Then they announced and they said uh, tomorrow there will be no combined Monday Bible study here uh, because and the pastor is in town. What's he going to be doing? Is he going to be sleeping? Well, you come and ask ministry, I'll tell you. But you know, the Lord is saying, Come ye yourselves apart. There are times we need a little rest, a little break. Our overseers, a little rest, a little break. Our choir, a little rest and a little break. And our ushers, a little rest, a little break. And you see our, you know, technical people standing there all the time. And they go from day to They never complain. They never complain. And God is using them to do a great job. But we are the people to think for them and to say, Come ye yourselves apart and rest a while. Because they didn't have any leisure, any time, any freedom, any vacation to eat or to recover their strength. But this year will balance up everything. Somebody there said will balance up everything. And so when you don't, uh, when you don't uh, have a combined Monday Bible study here, no speculation, I say travel, I say not travel. Tomorrow is see a way somewhere. No, not at all. I am here in Lagos. I'm just going to take some time apart and rest a while. Because, you know, I need to recover strength after all those extraordinary days. We're going to take some time. 
and then sometimes we might come to the Bible study, and then we give the choir time to raise a pay of rain. They know not at all. You don't understand. Like that song, they rent that now. It's not just something, just go there for two minutes and then say, one, two, three, four, five, the rain is so, and all that, and then we're back. No, for hours. It takes them hours, and then they've gone through the retreat for hours. They practice every day and every night. And then they go through the Congress hours and days they're practicing. And if we say, well, we, need, we know you need rest. Some of them are married, maybe all of them. If you are not married yet, I'm praying for you this year. Marriage. I said marriage. Good husband for you. A good wife for you in Jesus' name. And those who are not married yet, you know, you see me and I'll create the time. Maybe I'll come and sing with you in that private place and then don't clap, don't clap. And then I'll pray for all of you because I'm interested in everyone. That this year, all the cries of your heart, the Lord is going to fulfill in Jesus' name. And so it's not that we're unhappy or angry at anybody. We're just wanting to make sure that those who need some rest, and not perpetual rest, just rest for a little time. Rest for a little time here so that we all recover strength. I'll do it for myself, I'll do it for you, I'll do it for the choir, I'll do it for everybody so that you will be at top level of your strength this year. You run and then you are getting I said, we understand, we'll wait for you. Rest a little bit. And then you say, Pastor, I'm okay now. Then we said, rise up and let's keep on moving. And we're going to do it together in Jesus' name. Look at Songs of Solomon. Songs of Solomon. I'm reading from chapter one. Songs of Solomon, chapter one. It says in verse six, look not upon me because I am black. Because the son has looked upon me, my mother's children were angry with me, and they made me the keeper of the vineyards, but my own vineyard have I not kept. You see, the people who like to ride the willing horse to death. Oh, the people are willing. The people are ready. And they're willing to do anything. The Jesus is available. The Jesus is willing to do anything. It's finished, uh, you know, the Congress. And I want to hold crusade in that place. He's ready. He's willing. And nobody ever says, Pastor, we understand. You can rest a little bit. Pastor, we understand. You need to recover strength. And nobody ever tells all our other workers, we understand. We need to give you time. Because they have been spending and expending all the energy they have. And it says, my mother's children, they were angry at me. You think the people are happy at you when they say, keep on moving, keep on moving, keep on moving. When they say, keep on exercising that gift, exercising that gift. And you don't have any chance to rest. It says, my mother's children were angry with me and they made me the keeper of many vineyards in the plural but my own single vineyard, my own personal life, my own personal experience, my own fields have I not cultivated, my own vineyard have I not kept. That's the reason why we're going to, you know, adjust things and when you see those.